What's up everyone, my name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer at Cash App, and today I'm going to show you how to design snack bars in Figma in accordance with Google's material design guidelines. Let's dive in. If you're not familiar with snack bars, I recommend going to Google's material design site where you can learn about snack bars, other components within the material design system, and you can even interact with live demos in production to see how things look and feel. Snack bars are an informational component that show updates on an app's process. They're temporary and will disappear on their own even if they have the optional action and they're contextual, which means that they're placed in the most suitable area of the UI based on the information that they're providing. First thing we're gonna do is create a new text layer. Let's change this to be SF Pro. We'll have it be regular weight, and then we will set the size to be 14 pixels with 20 pixel line height and minus 1% letter spacing. We'll type single line message here, which is just placeholder copy. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit shift A to apply auto layout. We're going to change this fill to be that dark gray. And then we're going to change that text color to be a light gray. Now that we have that, let's change the horizontal padding to 16. And then we're going to change the vertical padding to 14. So this is 48 pixels high, but we want the width to be a fixed 344 pixels wide. So I'm going to click and drag this here. We'll set the width to 344 and then and right now, this text is just hugging its own content. So what we're gonna do is set this to fill container. And that way, if I have a lot more text here, it will fill the box accordingly rather than just hugging the contents that were set. Let's add four pixels of border radius here. And then we're going to create an effect, which is the card shadow. You're seeing that I'm using a lot of existing styles here. And what you can do if you don't have those is click on the link in the description and duplicate the Figma file to follow along. We're gonna call this single line message. And then that is our snack bar component. Now I'm going to take this and duplicate it. And I'm going to say with CTA, and then I am going to duplicate this and I am going to have it hug the contents and I'm going to type the word action. And I'm going to shift this to be semi bold instead of regular. And then I'm going to have this be the primary color. This is a bit hard to see. So I need to slightly change this purple to be a bit lighter like that. Now I'm going to take this action and apply auto layout. I'm going to change the vertical padding to eight pixels and the horizontal padding to eight pixels. But now this is looking a little tall. So I am going to change this to six pixels instead of 14. So we reserve that 48 pixel height and then I will align this like so. And now you've got a single line message and then you've got a single line message with the optional CTA. There are going to be some instances where you can't fill the copy on a single line. So in that case, there will be a two line message Rather than having the text bump up against the end like this, we're we'll increase the vertical padding to 16 pixels, and then you'll see it looks like that. So let's have this say two line. So now we have a single line message, a single line message with an action, a two line message with an action, and then let's finally make a two line message that has a longer action. So what we're going to do here is we are going to change this to be vertical and we're gonna change the spacing to be 18 pixels between these two elements. And then we are going to have the spacing at the top be 16 pixels, but the spacing at the bottom only be eight. And then the spacing on the right will only be eight pixels, but the spacing on the left will still be 16 pixels. And then we'll right align this and then we'll say, a CTA with more text goes here. So now we have a single line message, a single line message with a CTA, a two line message, and a two line message with a stacked CTA. So now I'm gonna take all four of these, select them, and I will create a component set. We will call this type. So we're gonna create a few properties here. The first one we'll create is action. And then we'll also create a variant that says line. The default will be one. And then let's take two of these. They are one line, but these two are two line and all of these have action. So let's say true. And on all, this one does not have an action. So let's say false. And then the last thing we'll do is add one more component, which says variant stacked. And by default, that will be false. But then for this, that will be true. So now if I take this single line message component, I can bring it over here. I've got the ability to toggle an action on or off. I can make it stacked, make it a two line. I can make it one or two. And the way these are laid out is a bit strange. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna call this snack bar. And then I'm going to have the number of lines be the first thing, the action be the second thing, and stacked be the third thing. So now you can see those changes have been reflected here. 
Now that we have my components, I went ahead and made a quick UI to show what they would look like in context. Here you would have your typical snack bar if you were just unable to upload an image, and then this would go away after a bit. In this middle one, the upload has failed, but it's retrying. And if you don't want to do that, you can just tap cancel. And then we have this more detailed one with more copy, and then the ability to say, test your app connection. This is only one instance of how to use the snack bar component, but you can see that it's really flexible based on the context that you need to use it in. And there you have it. You now have four snack bar components that you can use to provide more context about what's going on within different parts of your applications. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of snack bar components, how they work, and how to create your own next time you're working in a Figma project. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.